guys and welcome to this week's edition of the Coffee and Hero Show. Back with you after a week's hiatus. Never got a chance to do one last week. Multiple reasons. The main one being that our delivery didn't arrive last week until the Wednesday. Quite late on on the Wednesday as well. You know, obviously being shipping delays with regards to the, the Queen's Jubilee celebrations and all that kind of stuff. So just it got so late in the week I just never got a chance. Add to that the fact that we were then going into the weekend where we had the Ram V signing to you know, commemorate five years of the store being open. So massive thanks to everybody who came out to the signing. I uh, really was appreciated that you made the effort to come down to us. We, you know, we had a queue at the door for two hours straight. Uh, Ram was an absolute gentleman, uh, signed every single book people asked of him, posed for photos. All of the photos are on our Facebook page. Uh, we've provided links to it through our Instagram and Twitter feeds as well. But you can certainly find all of the photos there if you, you pose for one with Ram. I see quite a few people's Facebook uh, pictures being changed to photos of them standing beside Ram today. So, but yeah, the event was great, you know, and Ram is, is undoubtedly one of the most talented writers out there and he's only going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, you may regret the chance not getting to meet him before now because his career is just going like this, uh, not just through comics, but through other forms of media and so forth as well. So uh, he shared a few tidbits with us for his upcoming detective comics run. Detectives 1062 is where he takes over and it just sounds ridiculously exciting. A very different take on Gotham, very different take on Batman and Jay, he may have revealed a spoiler or two to us as well, but you know, lips are sealed. But yeah, cannot recommend jumping on Detective Comics enough when Ram takes over. That's going to be in July and that's going to be issue 1062. He also teased a couple of other projects to us as well that look like they're going to be announced in the next month or two as well. So. Yeah, his, his plate is full to say the least. But yeah, as I say, the, the signing was great. Then we took him out for dinner, went for a few drinks. And uh, yeah, just a, a really great time had by all. And, you know, we dropped him to the airport on the Sunday. And, you know, there's a good relationship for him there as well. So hopefully that'll lead to more signings. You know, that's, that's what we always want to achieve with these. We want the signings to go well and be nice and busy so that creators leave feeling good, knowing that a really good signing was organized for them. Plenty of people and you know they're well looked after because that's only then going to encourage other people to come over and you know come to belfast for signings which you know is what i think we all want so already working on one or two more at the moment so you know keep those eyes peeled and we'll certainly announce stuff when we have anything more concrete so i'm just looking forward to getting to tidy the story again a little bit after how busy that was uh it's a case of the store was neglected for maybe about a week but I have tons more I want to get out into the bays, ton, tons more new stock, for example. But I should also say as well, keep an eye on the website and in the store. We, Ram was good enough to sign some copies of Mini Desolata Star, of uh, not blue, and, uh, blue and Green as well, uh, Aquaman Andromeda. And we, we just wanted them to sign a few, a few things so that if you didn't get a chance to get down, there will still be an opportunity to pick those books up. So definitely pop in if that's something you're, you're interested in. So yeah. Outside of that, you know, I was having a little look at sort of entertainment news. You know, I've, I've sort of looked over the last two weeks and the thing is, again, we never got a chance to do a show last week, so there's quite a lot to cover. But I should say, first of all, I should preface this by saying I still have much midnight. I still haven't started Stranger Things. I haven't started the new season of The Boys. I haven't started Miss Marvel. I haven't started Obi-Wan. I hope too soon. I promise. I'm going to lose my geek credentials pretty soon, but... <clears throat> I did manage to finish off Better Call Saul there as far as it's went and that is such a show, cannot recommend enough. Nipped out to see Top Gun Maverick for a second time as well, just such a movie. Hopefully going to go see Jurassic Park sometime this week, I know Vicky's a big Jurassic Park head so uh, I will definitely go to see that. And then I believe the box office has just opened there for Thor Love and Thunder, same again. I mean I've said this before but the movies are easy enough to keep up with, it's just the sheer volume of television shows is... Uh, it's a strange complaint to have, but there's just too much. Although other people would disagree with me, I am sure. But yeah, there was one or two other things, you know, trailer-wise and so forth. I saw the Black Adam trailer drop there. Obviously starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This has been a long and development project for DC Comics. DC Movies, Warner Brothers, I should say. And I thought the trailer looked fun. It didn't give away a whole heck of a lot. There was some good effects work in there. Uh, I'm definitely really tickled to see... Uh, Pierce Brosnan be part of the DC universe as well. It looks like a rock movie, you know, bit of charm, bit of charisma, bit of humor, and some kick-ass action. So, you know, that sounds good to me. Definitely one to keep an eye out for. 
as well this week the batman dropped on blu-ray and 4k and dvd if you're uh, looking to get a hard copy of that uh, obviously i was a huge fan i believe my copy is sitting at home right now as i ordered the uh the steel book of that simply because it had the best cover more than anything but yeah a couple of hours of special features on there and then of course a three hour cut of the the 4k movie i am dying to watch that again but i promise i'll jump into a tv show before that so i'm not just watching the same things over and over but yeah that came out this week as well but in terms of other news there was a couple of good week comic announcements that have sort of come up in the last couple of days that are uh, worth having a look for so you know i know there's a lot of superman fans come into the store they're really enjoying the way the two superman titles are separate at the moment you've got your action comics which is your clark kent stuff phil kennedy johnson and then you've got your superman son of kal-el tom taylor jonathan kent but it looks like Superman is coming back to Earth in September. So he, at the moment he's been off in the, in the Action Comics War World saga uh, with Mongol. And it looks like he is coming back and then there's going to be a crossover storyline with his son John in November as well. So there's some really big, uh, big plans for Superman by the look of it. I mean when it comes to DC, obviously Batman gets tons of love, you know, it's where the money's made, whatever. But it's good to see some strong Superman stuff coming through as well. There is going to be a 56 page one shot it's called superman war world apocalypse that is going to wrap up the stuff from action comics that'll include the final battle between superman and mongol and between the authority of mongols on made champions as well and then that's then going to lead into uh, the return to earth as well so it's a it's an exciting time if you're a superman fan you've also got the superman space age one coming soon with the all reds involved in that as well so definitely something to uh keep an eye out for there uh i see as well there has been uh we're, we're a little bit away from it but you know i suppose the solicitations always start early but as well as free comic book every year you have halloween comic fest where there'll be uh, it's a little bit like a free comic book day not quite as many titles but definitely titles with more of a spooky tinge to them as well and marvel have announced their titles for it there's going to be some uh, big ones coming there's i mean as in spider-man 88 there is moongar and devil dinosaur Star Wars Doctor Aphra and Strange Academy 3 as well and some of these are going to be first appearance stories some of them are going to be the start of new story arcs uh, a little bit of everything but that's the Marvel side of things there'll always be indie ones as well in DC and again we'll do something similar to free comic book day with discounts on the day and, and things like that but yeah definitely worth keeping an eye out for um, let's see it is going to be on October 29th uh, so keep an eye out. We'll definitely release more details on that. I did see as well Fantastic Four. Dan Slott is exiting the series this year. Uh, he is going to finish on Fantastic Four 47. Uh, sorry, 46. 47 has already been solicited with a different writer and artist, but that is to do with uh, a crossover for the Avengers X-Men Eternals event. But it'll be interesting to see if they go back to Fantastic Four number one. Marvel love a reboot. Marvel love a number one. So we'll be curious to see that. But ever since they've done the legacy number, I'd prefer to see them keep it going with longer numbers. But you see the way Daredevils went back to number one, even with the same creative team, I would be surprised if they don't. But from what I've heard, Dan Slott's uh, run has been very good. I haven't personally been reading it. I think if it hits omnibus form, I would give it a go because there has been some you know, really well-regarded story arcs in there. But uh, I would have no problem with Dan Slott coming over to DC and writing a Justice League title, just saying. And then one last thing to finish on, and probably the best news of the week, Bruce Campbell is coming to the world of DC Comics. Again, I don't care what anybody says, the post credit scene of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness involving Bruce Campbell is the single best post credit scene in a Marvel movie. Whatever anybody said. Uh, but yeah, he is actually coming over to DC and he's going to be writing a horror book. And DC have a couple of different horror imprints. I don't know why they don't just amalgamate them all into one. But you've got the uh, DC Horror line. You've got the Joe Hill Hill House Comics line. You've got Black Label to a degree, I suppose, as well. But coming through the DC Horror Presents label is going to be Sergeant Rock versus the Army of the Dead. Art by Eduardo Risso. Oh my God, this sounds amazing. Uh, miniseries will recontextualize the adventures of Sergeant Rock, who has been a mainstay of DC, since being created back in 1959. So DC Horror presents Sergeant Rock vs. the Army of the Dead. The story begins in Berlin, 1944. The Nazis are flanked on all fronts by the combined Allied forces and defeat seems inevitable. In a last ditch effort to turn the tide of the war, Hitler and his team of evil scientists create a serum 
but resurrects their dead soldiers, creating an army of the dead even stronger than they were in life. Sergeant Rock, hero of the European theatre and his easy company, find themselves dispatched into enemy territory to face off against the strangest, most horrific enemies they encounter, gent, Nazi zombies. Fantastic. You know, you've got main covers from Gary Frank, you've got variant covers from Frank Quiley, Francesco Francavia, Charlie Adler, uh, all kinds of goodness wrapped up in that. And yeah, Bruce Campbell writing, Eduardo Risso, I am on board right there. So yeah, that finishes off the, the news. I may as well finish it off with the most exciting announcement, certainly out of them all. But we'll get on to the stuff out this week and uh, a couple of things I'm going to point out as well that came out last week just to bring you guys fully up to date. But before we do that, I'm going to do my sort of, uh, my attempt at a weekly previews, I suppose, uh, in showing you one title from each book that I would highly recommend for pre-order, so for getting onto your pull list. Just make sure you get those first prints, those, uh, you know, cover A, first print, mint copies, bagged and boarded, and that you're not paying something stupid and over the uh, over the top for it down the line. So one definitely to keep an eye for it, and speculators are already going absolutely mad for it, is Edge of Spider-Verse. So this is going to be the end of the Edge of uh, the Spider-Verse stuff that Dan Sloth has been working on. So it's going to be a five-issue miniseries. Edge of Spider-Verse is where they introduce the likes of Spider-Gwen, for example, uh, the, uh, the likes of Penny Parker uh, as well. So... It's a speculator's dream because their first appearance characters, will they end up in Spider-Verse movies? Will they end up in comic, uh, live action movies down the line? Who knows? But the first issue is due uh, this, <clears throat> the first issue is due in August. So uh, it's gonna be a 48 page issue one. The end of the Spider-Verse is coming. So written by Dan Slott, Alex Segura, and Carla Pacheo, and Mark Bagley and more on art. So again, the Spider-Verse stuff in general has been very good. Dan Slott on it, I'm on board with. But again, it's one for you, uh, one for you speculators out there. In terms of DC, I will showcase, let's see, there's some really good stuff here this month, actually. But I'll showcase this as an extension of some of the back titles. Uh, this is sort of Azrael. So Azrael is such an underutilized character in the DC universe, and he's making a bit of a comeback. So first of all, there's going to be a one shot just called Sword of Azrael, um, Dark Rising of the Soul. So this is written by Dan Waters and art and cover by Nicola Sejema. Uh, so that's going to be that. And then that's going to be your lead in to the main series, which is a six issue mini series just called Sort of Azrael. Uh, same creative team as well. So anybody who's signed up for Sort of Azrael so far, I've included the one shot as well, just so you're fully up to date. And then of course that six issue mini series that starts, but I think that's going to be a really cool title and something a little bit different within the, uh, the Gotham universe. And then with regards to the indie side of things, uh, I'm shocked that this wasn't the first one I picked, but I had to big up Declan's uh, old dog last time. But this is one called Love Everlasting. So brand new number one. Uh, this is from Image Comics. And this is written by Tom Keane and art by Elsa Charitier. I'm a big fan of the artist, first of all. And of course, I'm a fan, of, I'm a you know Cult of Keane fully paid member. Uh, but from Superstar Award winning creators comes a new ongoing series in the tradition of Sandman and Saga. No pressure. Uh, Joan Peterson discovers that she is trapped in an endless terrifying cycle of romance. A problem to be solved, a man to marry, and every time she falls in love, she's torn from her world and thrust into another teary saga. Her bloody journey to freedom and revelation starts in this breathtaking, groundbreaking first issue. So you've got cover A by Elsa Charte, you've got variants from Clay Mann, from Tula Lute, Jenny Frisson. Uh, some really good cover artists there as well. So again, get those pre-orders in. New Tom Keane book is always to be uh, celebrated, I think. Okay, next up, we've got variants in this week. So let's see, pull a rack of these out. <clears throat> so last week, Dark Crisis came out and we sold out of all the variants actually. But uh, I managed to get this one back in this week. So this is uh, Dark Crisis number one. This is the Bruno Redondo variant. Of course, so well known for his Nightwing work at the moment with Tom Taylor. Much more of a focus on Nightwing here and of the focus of the Bat family. Of course, Batman lurking in the background, but Dark Crisis number one. We have Superman, Son of Kal number 12. Now this is the one to 25 retailer incentive variant. This is by an artist called Mario Fuxello. And again, this is priced a little higher. It's priced at around 15 pounds. But again, one to 25 cover. So for every 25 of cover A, you have one of those ones printed. 
We have Spider Gwen Gwenverse, so traditional cover B. This is by Greg Land. He's been doing these homage variants, which is an homage back to previous Spider Gwen covers. And uh, with this one, that's sort of Gwen mixed with uh, all new Wolverine by the look of it. Speaking of Wolverine, you've got a new one this week, Wolverine 22, and this is a Declan Shelby variant cover. I see Deadpool is on the main cover as well, so he obviously has uh, a little bit of a role in this issue. But if you prefer the variant, that's the Declan Shelby variant there. One of my favorite series from recent times, I loved uh, issue one, was Grimm. So a couple of variants in this week. We've got the uh, Jenny Frisson variant cover. Jenny Frisson, of course, is someone who I collect all of her variant covers anytime she does them. But we've also got the Flaviano foil variant cover. So these are the versions of the cover A, but just with that foil finish. One, if you're planning any conventions anytime soon, we have Spawn 330. This is the blank sketch cover. So you really need an artist to be drawn with silver or gold pens on this. Similar to the ones we had for Ram for the sign-in actually on Saturday. Also have Batman Urban Legends number 16. So this is a cover of course showing Batman and Satana. This is by the artist Educur. And again, cardstock variant cover and just an alternative to the main cover A. There's a DC Pride Tim Drake special out this week, which covers some of the stuff that was covered in Batman Urban Legends. Uh, but I think there might be some new material in it as well. But Travis Murr has done a specific DC Pride uh, variant cover for that. So Travis Murr's done a few variants uh, at this point, mostly super related. We have the Sandman Universe Nightmare Country number three. We have a Francesco Francovia cardstock variant cover. Again, one of my favorite artists. And then we started pretty much started with Superman. We'll finish with Superman. Also for Superman, Son of Kal El Twelve, and this is the Roger Cruz uh, cardstock variant cover for that. So all of those are variants in this week. So plenty to choose from there. What have we got next? So we've got my pull list next. So let's see what we got. Pretty big one, as you would expect, because isn't it every week? There are a couple of graphics in my pull list as well, but I'll get to what those are and point them out once I reach the uh, what's new in this week section. So we kick things off with A Calculated Man. This is one written by Paul Tobin and art by Alberto Albuquerque. It's a brand new Aftershock number one. I remember this being on our previews board. It looked really, really interesting. Sort of mixture of a math genius with sort of Goodfellas crime type stuff. Plus it has a Scarface homage cover. You can't go wrong with that. One of my favorite horror titles at the moment, actually the first two issues of this have been wonderful. It's called A Town Called Terror. This is by Steve Niles, who of course was one of the creators of 30 Days of Night. And the artist on this is Simon Kudransky. I remember uh, him doing great art on Punisher not too long back, but the art style in this is really creepy. Lots of blood reds, lots of darkness, lots of shadows. Really good series that so far. Next up, we have Eric Powell's Albatross Exploding Funny Books. So with this one, this is Eric Powell, who of course created the Goon, uh, predominantly prints through his Albatross line. It's almost like a, uh, it's a book with a couple of different stories in there. So you've got some stuff involving the Goon, some stuff involving La Diabla, Hillbilly as well, and Lester of the Lesser Gods, and more no less. So it's a 48 page first issue. Uh, so anthology style, can't go wrong with that. Another good one has been the reinterpretation of uh, Alice in Wonderland in this series for Boom Comics, which is Alice Ever After. So this is from uh, Dan Panasan and Giorgio Spalletti. And again, the first two issues have been pretty sweet. Devil's Highway, uh, enjoying this one again. This is the, the second volume of this one, which is to do with one of the longest highways in America where so many truckers commit crimes that no one ever knows about. Um, but some good dark horror elements to that as well. Undoubtedly, one of my most anticipated this week is Do A Power Bomb. I've been going on about this one for quite some time. Daniel Warren Johnson, who of course is a big wrestling fan, doing a wrestling comic book. He says it's like wrestling that meets Dragon Ball Z. And he's got his normal colorist, Mike Spicer, on board for that. So that was the uh, colorist on Wonder Woman Dead Earth and Better Ray Bill as well. So definitely up there with my most anticipated this week. Going to be a seven issue miniseries. Rob Gillery's Farmhand continues. So again, can't go wrong with that. I've always loved Chew. Farmhand has been more than an ample follow-up. This of course is the, the start of the second half of Farmhand. Gonna be a 30 issue series in general. I'd mentioned it in the variants, but again, issue one of Grimm was superb. And this week sees the release of issue two. So Stephanie Phillips writing and Flaviano on art. 
So that's the full cover you can see there. And then that's been trade dress removed and made into foil. And that's what the variant cover was that I showed off. It's hard to believe that Radiant Black is 15 issues in already. This has been great. I mean, again, I've spoke about it before. I'm not a huge Power Rangers guy. But this seems to be like a Power Rangers book in all but name, but also a very approachable one because it's setting up a new continuity, setting up new world building, and it's just been a really, really good book so far. So up as far as issue 15, it's roughly about halfway through the, th the third arc. A couple of issues, these were actually due last week, but again, it's a big image week, you may have noticed based on the volume of stuff here. But this is, um, we've been getting image titles and they were originally due last week. So that Texas Blood, first of all, Again, you've heard me talk about this endlessly. There's a reason, it's awesome. Uh, up as far as number 14, this is a new story arc, so you can jump in here. There is uh, the first two trades available as well, both in store, both on the racks. But yeah, modern day noir with a cowboy tint, it's just superb. Uh, time Before Time, we're up as far as issue 13 for Declan Shelby and Rory McConville's uh, title. It looks like it might be uh, McCom Roy McConville flying solo in this one. I don't see Dex's name on here, other than of course he does the does the covers. But yeah, we're up as far as issue thirteen. So again, third arc stuff there. First issue of Twig was brilliant, a brilliant all ages title, very reminiscent of something like Bone or Wind. Uh, this of course is Scotty Young and then Kyle Straham on art, uh, and again, brilliant issue one. A lot of indie books this week, as you can see. Also written by Tim Cillian, Aaron Campbell. Uh, I've been loving West of Sundown. This is the going across all eras vampire tale, working in sort of a cowboy tinge as well. There was a lot of cultish stuff in the last issue. Uh, so we're up now as far as issue three, I believe. Yep, issue three. Walking Dead Deluxe issue 41. A slight spoiler on the cover, so don't look at it too closely. But again, ugh, Walking Dead, just it's amazing. It just... There's a reason it is as well regarded as it is, and this read-through has been brilliant. A couple of Marvels now. We have Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty. This is not the main cover, of course. This is the Scotty Young uh, Baby Marvel cover that Vicky makes me get every time. Uh, not that I'm complaining. But yeah, this is kicking off a new Captain America title. This one's focusing on Steve Rogers. Colin Kelly, Jackson Lansing involved in that one. So Captain America. I mentioned that in the variants that Wolverine had Deadpool on the cover, so I'm assuming he plays some sort of part in this. Uh, so Wolverine now as far as issue 22. Speaking of Daniel Warren Johnson, we have his writing here, but it's one getting on art for Jurassic League. First one was brilliant as well as this. It's basically a mixture of dinosaurs wrestling in the Justice League. You really can't go wrong. Superman's not Kal L12 this week as well. So it's Tom Taylor, of course, Kian Tormey. Uh, continuing to be artist on that couple just to finish off with we have Wonder Woman 788 as ever I go with the variant covers this one is by Paul Pope uh, so again that's how I just read my Wonder Woman is through variant covers and then this was one that sort of crept up on me a little bit and I just decided to take one at the last minute after a flick through it but it's called Sky Brown Presents After School and it seems to be a series of one shots but each one focuses on uh, sort of children and teenagers and each one of them promises to be grizzly. Like it or love it, that's what that is. So that's my pull list for this week. Of course, there's other stuff out as well. I should mention that last week, actually, Fortnite times Marvel came out. I've already seen online scalpers trying to sell it for 12, 15 pounds. Uh, my usual pet peeve, we ordered loads of them. We have loads of copies in. Get down here if you want to copy a copy at cover price. They're on the racks, they're on the website as well. Do not pay over the odds for this. And if you want the rest of the series, when you pick up number one, just let us know and we'll get that sort of for you as well. Uh, a couple of uh, bits and pieces I wanted to show from last week, actually, because there was some great stuff come in. But again, I never got a chance to, to do a show last week. But first of all, you have the latest Mighty Marvel Masterworks. This one is now focusing on Captain America. So this is collecting Tales of Suspense 59 to 77. This is, you know, reintroducing Cap into the Marvel world. And... Again, I'm a big, big fan of A, the format, B, the price point, and C, the material. <laughs> but there were a couple of really nice special editions coming last week, and again, I wanted to show them off. So first of all, you have Firepower, the hardcover. So this is hardcover one. This focuses on the 80-page um, the graphic that they first of all set up as the prelude, then the first trade paperback, and the second trade paperback. So you're essentially getting the equivalent of about 18 issues in here, presented in glorious hardback of uh, Robert Kirkman and Chris Stanley's brilliant Kung Fu epic. 
and again they've expanded the art as well made it bigger than a traditional comic so that was a release last week i spoke as well about daniel warren johnson there was also the hardcover for murder falcon came out with a glorious hollow label as well or logo i should say uh, and again this was the entire mini series of murder falcon but also there was a a short story in skybound x that's been included in this as well just a tremendous good time that one and then dark horse brought out the library editions of stranger things so this is essentially collecting all the Stranger Things comics so far. There's two volumes, uh, volume one there first of all, and then volume two. So again, nice hardcovers, expanded artwork, just feels that a little bit more special and roughly comes in about the same price as if you bought all the trades together anyway, if I'm being completely honest. But yeah, great, great stuff and very timely, obviously, with Stranger Things being on TV. I promise I'll watch it soon. But yeah, those were all from last week. So what's into the store new this week? So again, a little bit of a mixture of a few things going back, coming back in stock and going on the racks and then some new stuff this week as well. I mean, first of all, is a, you know, restock Doomsday clock has been selling really well recently. A lot of people sort of discovering Doomsday. It's great that this, you know, Jeff Johns, Gary Frank uh, tale is, it's getting its time in the sun now because it was unfairly lamented in single issue form simply because of the release schedule for it, which was atrocious, let's be honest. Uh, but when you've got it all in one place, you see how much care and effort has went into it. And there's more and more of Doomsday Clock seeping into the, the modern single issues as well. Nice big Omni next, we have uh, the whole damn thing as it's called. This is Curse Words. This is from Charles Soul and Ram Brown. This creative team recently launched 8 Billion Genies in single issue form, but this was one that they did prior to this. This covers 1 to 25, as well as the holiday, spring, and summer specials. Plus, there's a brand new afterwards issue. Uh, this is Curse Words, a beautiful, hilarious, action packed, and magical comic. A 760 page epic that tells the story of an evil wizard named Wizard, sent to Earth from a hellish dimension called the Whole World to destroy our existence. But Wizard decides he likes our Earth better than where he came from and decides to just stay. But that won't last long. It's great stuff. I've read that one myself. Next up, we have a complete collection for Midnighter. So this was a uh, series through DC Comics, spun out a lot from the uh, the Grayson side of things. And this was Steve Orlando. It was all 12 issues of the Midnighter series, but it also has Midnighter and Apollo 1 to 6, as well as stories from DC Cybernetic Special and DC Pride as well. So he can burst your eyeballs and punch his fist through your liver before you even see him coming. And he's the good guy. What have we got next couple of indie ones so first of all we've got chicken devil this was uh it's got a real breaking bad sort of tinge to it fun series brian piccoletto and hayden sherman on art and this is volume one called under pressure it's released through aftershock comics and i really did really dug this read it in single issue form again more and more aftershock titles come highly recommended because there is some great stuff uh this was actually released last week but crossover volume two now so if you want to continue with the donny kitts Jeff Shaw special. This collects crossover seven to thirteen, so it does actually involve the uh, the Chip Zdarsky one as well. There's also a great co-written Robert Kirkman issue, which is highly recommended. A couple of Marvels in this week, so we have Black Panther Volume One. So this is since John Ridley took over the title. Uh, this covers Black Panther one to five. Uh, if the truth comes out, it could cost him everything. I mean, look at that gorgeous wrap around Alex Ross. Uh, cover. I think we actually have it in the framed poster up there as well. But yeah, if you're looking for a jumping on point for Black Panther, you can do worse than that. We also have Avengers Forever. So first trade of that. This is Avengers Forever 1 to 5. Written by Jason Aaron and art by our Aaron Cooter and Carlos Magno and a few others as well. The legend of the Avengers spreads across the infinite worlds of the multiverse. Uh, back in stock as well because they sold out really quickly when we got them in are all four volumes of Sin City release so far. So again, these are beautiful editions of one of Frank, possibly Frank Miller's magnum opus. I'd say Dark Knight Returns, of course. Uh, but yeah, this includes all four volumes released so far. So you've got The Hard Goodbye. You've got A Dame to Kill For. You have The Big Fat Kill. And then That Yellow Bastard as well. So again, they've expanded these up from the previous editions. The previous... Sin City editions were released, sort of only came to about here and then to about there. They were smaller ones, which was a shame because the artwork's so raw and visceral that it, you know, deserves to be in a bigger edition. Next up, we have the trade of Aquaman the Becoming. So this is, I think it was six issues in total. Yeah, six issues in total as well as Future State Aquaman 1 and 2. This is Brandon Thomas's uh, title. 
Also have artists on there, uh, Daniel Sampier, Scott Koblish, and a couple of others as well. So a new era for Aquaman and a uh, DC Pride title as well. Next up, we have Dark Blood from Boom Studios. This was really good as well. This was one I read in single issues all about a, a black guy in, I think it was the 60s? Yeah, it was just after World War II, who has superpowers, but he keeps it to himself in a small country because the world's not ready for superheroes, but the world's definitely not ready for a black superhero. Next up again is uh, definitely a highly anticipated one for me this week, and we ordered quite a few of these in as well. So this is the start of the Bone Orchard mythos. This is the new hardcover horror line that's coming out from Jeff Lemire and Andres Sorrentino. The first book is called The Passageway. And these are going to be a series of hardcover graphic novels coming out and the first one this week. There was a free comic book day issue that would have been a little lead into this. Oh, can't go wrong. Really looking forward to it. I love that creative team. And that was on my pull list, as was this uh, omnibus. So this finishes off my week as well. And out this week is the omnibus for Daredevil from Ed Brubaker and Michael Lark. This covers Daredevil 82 to 105. Some of the absolute best Daredevil storytelling you will see. Nominated for three Eisner Awards. Highly regarded, beautiful omnibus edition out this week. So there we have it. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Perfectly on time, because I'm getting kicked out of Smithfield in about three minutes time. Uh, but as ever, anything appeals to you guys, just get in touch as always. We can hold things over for you. All pull lists are done. Just one final plea again that if you do watch this show and you do have a pull list with us and you don't want a pull list with us anymore, please do just let us know. We've got a few people still waiting on to hear back from, but it is what it is. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the store throughout this week. And as ever, take it easy.